All right, today is part two of getting at the cylinder heads in the Mustang GT. If you're following along on this progress and you want to go watch part one, click on the recommended video in the upper right hand corner of the screen. Also make sure you're subscribed so you can follow along as I get down to those cylinders. To be honest, it's Sunday, I kind of want to just relax, so I'm setting the bar a little low today. We are just going to empty all the coolant out of the motor via the drain system out of the bottom of the radiator. And then we're going to tackle removing the fuel injectors and the intake manifold. As we go through this, you may find me using uh, some rather specific tools. For instance, today we're going to use a fuel line disconnect tool. Um, if you want any of those tools, just head down to the description below. I've provided links to everything that I use. All right, let's jump into it. Now discharging the coolant should be pretty simple. First, go ahead and take the cap off of your coolant reservoir and then I am actually going to go ahead and jack up the one side of the car, mostly because there is a little valve on the side of the radiator, but those never seem to work that well and they take a lot longer. Right below that little outlet is a valve that we're just going to unscrew and it's going to pour straight out of the bottom of the radiator. So if you do decide to jack it up, make sure you look in your manual, make sure you are using the proper jack points, then just prop up the front passenger side and then head underneath, put a bucket under, and what you're gonna find here, here's a little outlet tube, and then here's the valve. And this is a, a like a number eight Allen head, but we're just gonna unscrew it. I'm just gonna unscrew it with my fingers here. Make sure that you have a bucket underneath. All right, there we go. That little outlet valve is working, but it's also leaking from the valve itself. So we're just gonna let this go for a little bit and uh, start to drain the system. Once that's done draining, or obviously once your container gets full, just go ahead and close that valve, and then uh, either swap out to a new container, or uh, if you're all set, just close it back up, and the system's gonna be most of the way empty. Now there's still gonna be a lot of liquid in there, so if we were to, for instance, to go pull off the water pump, there would still be liquid in there because it's being held up in different chambers in the system. That's no problem. We just wanna get the majority of it out, so when we do go off and pull hoses, or pull out the water pump, we're not having a huge mess on our hands. While that continues to uh, do its thing, we're gonna work on the fuel rails. Now I'm gonna try to take the fuel rail and the injectors together as one assembly. That's how the Ford factory service manual recommends that you do it, so that's what I'm gonna try. There's a few things that we need to remove. That is this uh, sensor here, and of course the fuel line itself. Now you wanna start by depressurizing your fuel line. And if you are just taking off your fuel rails and you haven't taken anything else off, the proper way to, to depressurize your fuel line is to go take the fuse for the fuel pump out of the fuse block and then run the car until it stalls. Once it stalls, continue to turn the key, um, I think it was about for five, five to seven seconds to make sure all the pressure's out of the line. However, the whole reason that I'm doing this job is to not run the motor. So this is technically still pressurized. This is not how I want to handle it, but this is how I'm gonna have to do it. I'm just gonna take off this safety plug here, and then I'm going to release it with pressure in the system. I'm going to absolutely ensure that I'm wearing eye protection, and I'm going to wrap this area up and kind of tuck as much paper under here as I can to kind of eliminate um, you know, getting fuel all over the engine. So I'm gonna start by removing this vacuum hose. There we go. And just kind of pull it off this stud back here as well. There we go. Set that aside. And then push down on this electrical connector. Set that aside and good. Now this can just presumably come off with this fuel rail. Okay, here we go. So as you can see, I have created kind of a a wrap around the other areas. This is just some packing paper. And I'm gonna remove the little safety clip here. There we go, just kind of push that aside. And then I have a 5 8 fuel line disconnect tool. I'm just gonna set that on there, just like that. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take even more paper towel just to reduce kind of the, the spray and wrap it around the whole thing. So what I'm gonna do is just take this disassembly tool and I'm just gonna push it against it just like this until it comes off. Excellent. So all I did was gently push just like that until it released. 
and then I just slid this whole thing out. So there we go. It's disconnected. We have almost no spillage, as you can see. That was excellent. And now we just kind of want to set this up here, and I'm going to wrap something around it to ensure that we don't get, uh, get fuel dripping into the engine bay. So I'm just going to clean this up, take this out, and then for my radiator, it should be uh, fully emptied now, so I'm just going to go close that valve and uh, drop the car back down to normal height. Now that we have the vacuum hose and the electrical connector for the pressure sensor gone, we also have the, uh, the actual fuel line removed, we can start taking the rails off. Now, there are four studs that need to get removed, two on this side, two on the other side. On the other side, you do have to remove two uh, kind of tie downs for the loom, for the positive lead on the alternator. But then once that's free, just remove all four of these studs. Now, like we talked about in part one, ensure that you are indexing all of the nuts and bolts that you're removing from the motor. So for instance, I put fuel rails on a bag and I put all of the studs from the fuel rail in that bag. Now, if you haven't been following along on the videos and you didn't watch part one, uh, I did go ahead and remove all of the electrical connectors for the fuel injectors in that video. So uh, that step's already been done. But now that we have everything disconnected, we're going to remove these as one assembly. So we're gonna remove both sides at once because it's connected in the center. And then we're gonna make sure we have a nice clean place to set them down once we have them off. Okay. Woo! I had to pull uh, what I would call uncomfortably hard on these to get them out. So just kind of be aware of that as you go into it. I'm just gonna gently kind of set them back in their wells while I go work on the other side. So I have the other side free. I'm just gonna grab it from inside of this loom. All right, and then set it back down. Come back to the other side here. Grab the other one, make sure it's clear. All right, great, and then lift it away. All right, so the last thing we're gonna knock out today is taking off this intake manifold. Now there's a combination of 10 bolts and studs around the intake manifold that need to be removed. In addition, if you didn't take off the hoses or the throttle body uh, before, then take them off now, get them out of the way. We need to then take this EVAP hose off. There's another hose in the rear that needs to get removed and there's also an electrical connector on the back of the intake manifold that needs to get removed before we even take off the bolts and studs. Now I'm going to start by removing this evap hose. We just push down on this clip and uh, you can just slide that right off. Easy, easy. And then here you have a T-junction. You can just remove the hose from that T-junction so you don't have to worry about removing it from the rear of the intake manifold. So just take that kind of set it back aside here. This comes out of the brake booster, so just be careful not to yank on that. Then just reach back and disconnect that electrical connector. There's just a simple little clip at the top. There also seems to be a few of those plastic retaining clips like we saw earlier on the looms. Uh, those will have to be popped off as well before you can gain access to those rear studs. Once you're clear, just go around and start removing them all. They are 10 millimeter. The sequence in which you take them off doesn't matter, but when you put them back on, make sure you're putting them back on in this sequence. Once you're ready, gently lift each side to ensure that you in fact have it all removed. Excellent. Now, make sure the rear is clear. Feeling something on here, let's go take a look. All right, so it looks like there's another part of the loom that is uh, attached to the intake. So let's push that out. And you'll see that once you start to pull it off here. There we go. Excellent. Let's try this again. All right. So I'm gonna make sure all the electricals out of the way. That should be good. And now start to lift. All right, pull the front out first, then the back and then flip it upside down, all right, like this, and then go set it somewhere. All right, we're gonna go ahead and stop there. It is um, just like the last video, about 
4,000 degrees in this garage, so uh, I am ready to be done for the day. However, made a great amount of progress. We went ahead and we removed our fuel rails, emptied our cooling system, and took off our intake. In the next video, we're gonna start making some more room up front by removing some of these radiator hoses, and then start taking all of the pulleys off the front. Then we're gonna go after our timing chain cover, because to remove those heads, we need to remove those timing chains. In the comments below, let me know why you're doing this job. If you're following along to get down to your cylinder heads, or maybe somewhere before that, let me know what's going on. I'd love to talk about it. Be sure to hit like on this video if you liked it. Subscribe to follow along with this project and for more awesome content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.